On behalf of the Gutzmer and Morris family, as well as the family of Highland Crest, thank you for taking time out of your morning to be here today to celebrate the life of Evie Gutzmer. She is one that has meant a lot to, I imagine, each of you in this room. And it's, a, it's appropriate for us to gather and to just recollect some memories of her and also to be encouraged by the Word of God. Let me take a moment and read what was written of her by her sister, Tina. I think it was well written and it provides a nice little summary for us. It says, Evie Michela Gutzmerne Morris, 27, left her body behind for a glorious entrance into the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ on July 17, 2019. She was born on June 25, 1992 in the Philippines to Joseph and Cecilia Morris. On July 5, 2019, she married Joel Gutzmer. She made the most of the time the Lord gave her, not achieving perfection here, but bringing honor and glory to her Lord. She loved making art, both on canvas and paper, but especially through baking and decorating cakes. Her love for children was realized through her work as an art teacher and volunteer Sunday school teacher at her church. Her life, ministry, and race on this earth are now finished. She now worships from a much better vantage point. A little bit later in our service, the family has requested that if you have a memory or a, a reflection that you would like to share, there will be an opportunity for you. There'll be some microphone here in this aisle as well as this aisle. And so you can begin to think about that when that time comes a little bit later in our service. Let's pray at this time. Let's pray for the Lord's strength. Let's pray for God to take his word and through the Holy Spirit to, to fit it into our life. Let us pray for strength for the family and for God to be glorified in our service today. Lord, we are always in need of you. And there are occasions like this where our need is made more aware to us. Many in this room believe what the Bible says. And we believe that one, when they are a Christian, is absent from the body and present from the Lord. You told us in John 14 not to be troubled, but that you would go and prepare a place for the disciples. And then we think also for Christians. And, you would go on ahead and one day you would greet those who have turned from their sins and, and put their faith in the finished work of the cross. And this morning we believe that. You've also told us that you would send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, that would come and reassure us even in our dark time that, that God is near, God is present, that God will see us through, the sun will shine. And we claim that today. And we thank you for the privilege of, of being able to gather for the memory of Evie. Now would you please be honored, and may we honor her in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe I'll just make this announcement as well to spare you from an awkward moment. But please silence your phones and, uh, during this time. Uh, this service also has the, the opportunity for many different people to participate. Abby's cousin is here. Our music minister, Rob, will be leading us in a few songs. If you see a hymnal in front of you, feel free to grab it. A little while later, Abby's uncle and pastor will be reading some scriptures. So feel free to grab your hymnal and turn to hymn number... 43. Number 43, please. Now we stand together and sing, This is my Father's world. This 
This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me. Good morning. Let us not just listen with our ears, but with our entire being to the words of God. 2 Corinthians 5. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, for in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, by putting it on, we might not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God who has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. When Evie passed away, of course, I was grieving like most of you. And I'd like to share from you just briefly again the story of Jacob who became Israel. From Genesis, we read Joseph's brother when Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit. He tore his clothes and returned to his brothers and said, the boy is gone and I, where shall I go? Then they took Joseph's robe and slaughtered a goat and dipped it in blood and then sent the robe of many colors and brought it to their father, Jacob, and said, this we have found. Please identify whether it is your son's robe or not. 
And he identified it and said, it is my son's robe. A fierce animal must have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt dead and torn to pieces. Then Jacob, who later became Israel, tore his garments and put on sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son for many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, no, I shall go down to Sheol to my son mourning. Thus, his father wept for him. But the word of God tells us that Jacob was found faithful to God. He grieved for many years because he thought Joseph was dead. God's word tells us out of all places, they meet in a worldly nation called Egypt. And Joseph cried and said, I thought I would never see you again. Not only you, but your sons. And I'm so thankful to God. So after all that grieving, he accepted God's plan and worshiped God. So I, so I thought about that about heavy. God's word tells us, if you're a believer of Christ, your spirit goes straight to heaven, but one of these days, bodies of believers of Christ will be perfected and resurrected, and all believers of Christ will be joined together again. And we will worship forever and ever. So uh, we grieve right now, just like Evie, live by faith in Jesus Christ. We too are to live by faith in Jesus Christ like she did, and she desires that, I'm sure. Thank you, Evie, for your ministry, for your love, your creativity and joy. And most of all, I believe our God, our Creator God, desires for us to live by faith in Christ, for there's no one else but Jesus Christ. You can remain seated, but take your hymnals again, please, and turn to number 334. 334, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. What a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, birth of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, numbers done by sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. my story, this is my song, praise 
take some time to give you an opportunity here in a moment to be able to offer some reflections on how Evie impacted your life. Uh, in a moment, there'll be some microphones set out here, but as you're thinking through that, I'm going to ask Evie's sister, Tina, to come at this time. Um, and I think, Miss Tina, it might be best to go all the way around and come up here. So let us hear what Miss Tina would like to share. Hello everyone, thank you for being here and thank you especially to Highland Crest for your invaluable support and assistance during this time. Words can't fully express how much of God's love we felt through you. I didn't think I would need to speak about Evie in front of a crowd again so soon after she became a wife. My sister's greatest ambition was to be a wife and mother. It seems God's plans differed from hers in that she fulfilled only half of her dreams and only for a short season. Evie was more than just a sister to me. She was my best friend. Our personalities molded into complements of each other. She having strengths where I am weak and vice versa. One of the things I'm known for is selflessness. My dad says I too often put others in front of myself. But I think this and my faith are what's helped me cope. I choose to see Evie's death from a different perspective than others might, from her perspective. Yes, she may have been called home sooner than our plans, not have been able to realize as many goals as she would like, but this past week has shown me the impact she's made. I guess that was enough. God's earthly plan for her is complete, and she's now getting her new life schedule. I prefer to imagine her dancing with Jesus in a wide open field of rich purple flowers as he takes her to the mansion he specially prepared for her. She can now do the things this heavy, sin-laden world has kept her from, worshiping the one true God face to face. Remember his promise in Revelations 21, 4 and 5, to her and all who, by faith, have accepted his offer of salvation. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Well, uh, thank you, that was, that was wonderful. Uh, let's uh, I'll just lay a few things out here. Uh, those of you who share, why don't we keep our comments relatively short, and that way uh, every, there can be a, many a different people get a chance to speak. And in addition, as you think of the comments that you'll share, you want to make sure that they're appropriate uh, for this setting. So having said that, who, who would like to go first and, and share a memory or two uh, about Miss Evie? And Ryan and Joel and, and, and Evie came just last weekend to visit us. And it was the first time I saw my cousin, you know, from a little, my little cousin to an adult. It was the first time we, we shared as artists together and, and and start to have that relationship. And my wife Heidi and I were so excited for this, this growth of this new relationship with both Joel and Evie. We were planning on painting together, just, just learning and, and being artists together. I, what I wanted to say the most, especially to Joel, is both Heidi and I saw Evie in your eyes. 
and how much you loved and cherished her and how much she loved and cherished you. And we were so excited for your future together. And I kept asking, why, why did this happen in such a short time? But maybe it was that, that perfect moment because she loved you so much and she was the happiest I've ever seen her. And, and that creation, the ability to create, maybe it is God's plan to have her help create that special feeling that you had together in, in this world. So my heart goes out to you. If there's anything you and your family and, and, and all of us need, we're here for you. He really meant a lot to me. Um, I got to know her um, just because she was always so willing to help, um, sort of at any at any moment. Um, and you just got to see the joy that she had with the kids um, here at church. Um, but not just how she was with them, but how she was with our kids. Um, and she'd always help me um, with them. And there'd be times that. I would need to leave her, leave the kids in a room to take care of something else, and I'd come back, and Evie was in there playing with them, and it really meant a lot to me how much she just, she loved them as much as we did. I got to be Evie's Sunday school teacher for a few years, and one of the things that I loved about Evie was, um, I remember we were talking about what's something that you look for in a church, and she automatically said, I look for a church that preaches the right doctrine, and I, that was so impressive to me to see this um, young lady wanting to come to church um, that, that spoke the truth, and um, that just really meant a lot to me. I thought that was really neat. Uh, maybe before you do, Ms. Vanna, um, I understand that we're under a tornado warning and that there are sirens going off right now. And I think the most appropriate thing for us to do is just to, to go down to our basement right now. And we'll just, we'll have to resume our service. But I'm, I think that's the most caring and responsible thing for me to do right now. So, um, Russ Sturdivant, will you kind of escort people? Kind of like egg was on my face. I couldn't explain why did our only <laughs> child have curly hair. Um, kind of blew away my examples and everything. But that's, that's the Lord. Um, yeah, he proved me inadequate to be able to figure that one out and to teach the truth. But yet, um, Evie started off proving God right. And she has been a joy from the beginning. And I have tried to make sense of God's timing but the only thing I have come back with is that God is perfect. He doeth all things well. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Evie is with him. And she is happy as she could ever be. I didn't think she could be happier than a couple of weekends ago. <laughs> but I know based on truth that she is. And I know that Joel and I would um, would like to bargain with God, would like to bring her back, but she's happy. And I don't want to, I don't want to dishonor the Lord 
by being overly, I realize now, I, all my, my grief understanding is totally turned on its ear. I've never hurt so much. But I know that Abby is rejoicing in the presence of her Savior. Forevermore to be ecstatic. Forevermore to see perfect art. No imperfections. And I just, I am thankful, not for the timing, but I am thankful to know that she is with her Lord. If I can add with that real quick. How many of you can envision Evie's beautiful smile, <laughs> right? Now imagine when she got to heaven and saw Jesus. Just picture that smile. Remember that. I think we all need to remember that. That even the greatest smile that we can see here on earth, when we see our God himself in perfection, we just can't help it but smile and worship. Her faith, we're public school, so we're not supposed to talk about a lot of faith stuff. But I believe that people go into that field, there is a calling. And Evie showed that every day. The quiet person, the person who on the first day of school would come in and say hi, and we might not see her until the end of the year. <laughs> in her short time at our elementary school, she's probably connected with well over a thousand students. Those thousand students are her. Because what we found from this group is how beloved she was as a teacher. Being able to go see her in a classroom, I know Evie is being a very quiet and private person. In that classroom, she was anything but. She was somebody that could take kids who hated art and make them into artists. The artists of the week pictures that she put up every week on Monday, you'd walk by and you'd say, that, that had to have been a fifth grader. And you look, and that was kindergarten artwork. One of the things that we loved about her is art was never an end for her. It was a process in growth. And in listening to all of you share today, that's what she's going to leave with us. That it's a continual process of growth. We're trying too to figure out what the meaning of this is. And I think maybe it comes down to that continual process of growth and faith. So thank you for everything that you've done for her and allowing us to experience her in four years. She will be greatly missed. Um, but we feel very grateful that she was part of our community. Another memory? I haven't heard anyone say anything about cakes yet. <laughs> and if you knew Abby, uh, and you saw pictures up there on the slides, uh, but I got to taste the cakes for the first time at the wedding. And not only was it amazing art, but it may have been the best cake I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it's fantastic. Who else would like to share? Either lead us in a song or? I think those of us that were in the choir will miss her because she was always in the center section, bright smile, and just you knew that God was working in her and in her. What a blessing. So I already told the family this, but they asked me to do flowers for the uh, funeral and I picked Sweet Surrender Lily because it reminded me so much of Abby because she surrendered her whole life to the Lord when she accepted him she did not accept the world at all she accepted a life of God and following him and loving him and being obedient to him and the whole time I was making the arrangement I was thinking about Abby and how strong she was and what an example and how much she loved the Lord and everything about him. I don't know why, but I, the Lord just kind of brought to my mind, I'd like to sing, give thanks. 
gives thanks with a grateful heart, gives thanks holy. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks, because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. For us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. The worst has passed, and I think, I think we can resume our service upstairs at 12:20. So that gives us about 10 minutes, and and uh, we'll, we'll try to. I wouldn't say go there yet because there's still a, a, a red band that's working through right now. But in about 10 minutes, we can meet upstairs and uh, resume our service. Okay. I I understand that for the family, the uh, Morris family, that that sort of weather is not unusual. They, they're used to monsoon season in the Philippines, and it seems appropriate for us to have a little bit of that here for Evie's funeral. Thank you for your willingness just to be flexible with us, and I think we just wanted to be safe. Uh, before we move with the next part of our service today, I did want to give just another person or another few people an opportunity. I understand there really wasn't uh, microphones downstairs, so if there's someone that would like to share uh, Another memory of Abby, we, we certainly can provide that before we sing our next song and go to the uh, proceed through our service. Is there another? All right, well, then I would invite you to, to take your hymn, hymnals, and Pastor Jim and Vanna uh, were the pastor and wife at Highland Crest when Evie first came just a few years ago, and they're gonna lead us in a few songs. Uh, I believe Great Is Thy Faithfulness is, is a song, and those of you who are at the wedding uh, know that this is the song that Evie walked down in. Most of you are aware that the Bible is filled with hundreds and hundreds of promises some of them, many of them were promises that people made of things that they intended to do but did not do. But it's also filled with many, many promises that God has made and he's never failed one of his promises. That's why we call him faithful. It's hymn number 54. Let's stand together and sing those three verses. And as we sing those words, think about this great God who's so faithful to us in every situation.
difficult week, one thing that has come out of this that I've appreciated, and that is to spend time, more time, with Joel's family and Evie's family, and yesterday I had a chance to visit with them a little bit to go over some of the requests that they would like in the service, and I'd asked uh, a particular chapter, a particular passage of scripture that was very meaningful to Evie, and Joel mentioned Romans 8. And so what I'd like to do is take probably the most famous verse from Romans 8 and take the passage of scripture that Joel had indicated Evie had committed much of it to memory and allow that to preach to us this afternoon. And if you're a believer and you're familiar with the scripture, then you know I'm speaking of Romans 8, verse 28, that reads this. And we know... For those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And Father, right now, we pray that you would take this short verse and you would allow us to just rest here for a little while and to contemplate these words. And we know that what you'd like to do is to take your truth and to apply it now into our, our hearts to grant us hope, grant us faith. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's just look at this verse together. Many of you have it committed to memory, and I'll just pause at a couple of these key words. The first here is, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. The first word I want us to focus on is the word know. It is, it is a word of assurance, but it is not informed by emotions or personal intuitions or opinions. Rather, it is rooted in God's timeless word. It is the awareness that every aspect of our life 
is in God's hands. And we build our lives on this truth that God knows what is best. Last summer, Joel accompanied the youth up to Devil's Lake State Park for some rock climbing. And as we scaled the towering bluffs of the quartzite, we were fortunate to have ropes that accompanied us. These ropes were anchored into some other quartzite or tied around trees for stability. And as one student or an adult would climb some 60 to 80% up that bluff, they took some assurance in knowing that there was a rope that was anchored to something that would hold them. Because if that were to give way and they would slip, it could be fatal. Well, on this day and in the days that have passed, we have been reminded of God's anchor, His Word. And we can know that God is here and that He is trustworthy. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. And I think for many of us, we've had trouble with the word all this week. But I remind you that this word all is not qualified at all here in this passage. It is a comprehensive word without any restrictions or any contradictions. As one asks this question, well, what could this all include? The context here could help us. I was helped by Martin Luther's commentary on this passage because he says, look at the context to find out what that all might refer to. And in chapter 8, verse 35, Paul said this, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? He lists all of these different things, including the word sword that would symbolize a tragic death. And so if we look at the context here of Romans 8, the all things would include just that list, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, and even death. That all would even, would even inform us today that God can work this event for good. I, like many of you, and it's already been relayed a, a bit this morning, can recall Evie's first time in our church. And unlike many people her age that will look around at a church and say, you know what, there really isn't a lot of people here my age. Let me go on to the next church. She said, you know what, God's word is being preached here. And, and there's, there's Christ-centered worship going on here. And I can say that because I wasn't the pastor at the time. But, but she, she appreciated that. And whether there were any marriage prospects at the time, she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant myself here, and I'm going to serve. And that's what she did. And it was a, a year or two later, where that guy with the big bushy beard <laughs> and, a, and a smile that would light up a room, come through those double doors, and would greet, your, greet you with a handshake, saying he had just graduated from Eau Claire, and he was looking for a good church. I think it was the second week here, we quickly threw together a little fellowship at our house at the end of the service, and we had some people over. And I have the, the, the sensitivity and the intuition of a, a slab of granite. <laughs> but even I could tell that something was going on on that first encounter, largely because Evie and Joel wouldn't leave. All of our other guests had passed through, and they looked at one another in the eye, and they talked, and they visited, and I'm really glad that they didn't leave. They visited there for a long day, and I look at Melody, and she look at me, and we'd kind of go like this. <laughs> and uh, 
I'm not usually quick to pick up things like that, but I did pick up something on that day. And our church family has looked on with absolute giddiness over these last couple of years as we've tracked their relationship. As you might have seen, they were Mary and Joseph in a program not long ago. As I did premarital counseling with them, there was no need to turn on the light because as Abby walked into the room, she lit up the room with excitement about her wedding day. And has there ever been a more beautiful bride that walked down the aisle with her father as that took place on July 5th? She had the day of her life. She got to meet and marry the man of her life. And you gave her the honeymoon of her life. And so we say, all? Really? As we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good? Well, let's, let's go to the next word then. And that is the word good. Work together for good? The phrase in Greek here is one in which we get our word synergy. It's the idea of taking various elements to produce a greater effect. John MacArthur says that table salt is composed of two different poisons, sodium and chlorine, but when you put them together, it makes something that add to our food, the taste of our food. Now these are hard words for us to receive today, just as they would have been hard words for Naomi to receive when she lost her husband and she lost her sons. And when she strolled into town and they said, is that Naomi? And she said, don't call me Naomi, but call me Mara. Call me bitter. The Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me. It would have been difficult for Job to hear these words that God would work good from this when he lost his seven sons and his three daughters. And his response was, he said, let's curse the day that I was born. It certainly would have been hard for Joseph to hear when he was thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, in prison, and forgotten. But we see in all these cases, time passed. And their calamity was not the end of the story. Rather, it was only a chapter in God's redemptive story. Naomi would be a grandmother of a child that would be in the line of Jesus. Job would not only have seven sons, but he would also have three daughters again. And his experience provides remarkable insight to God's sovereignty. And Joseph's life tells us that God gets glory through our perseverance. I was reminded this week, actually I was informed by someone that has gone through a lot of pain in their own past, and they told me about Joseph Scriven, a young man himself who was engaged to Mary, and the night before he was to get married, his wife drowned. And in reflecting on this event, he penned these words, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we knew not carry everything to God in prayer. God has worked good in Evie's life. God has worked good in Joel and Evie's life. To mom and dad, he took the gospel seed that you had in your life and you placed it into her life and she planted it into others. She served her church family faithfully. She used her talents for teaching and arts to edify this local church. She displayed that modesty and beauty belong in the same sentence. And I'm here to report to you you did a remarkable job raising her. Thank you for sharing her with our church family. And I'd say to you, Joel, you and Evie modeled for our church family. You modeled for our young people what it is like to wait and to pray for God's mate. 
You see, as a dad, and as dads and moms can testify in this room, what we try to do is we try to instill in these things into our children, say, we, you first need to become a believer. And then you need to pray that God would send you a mate that is also a believer. And I know our culture offers an alternative called dating, a casual dating, but this is not God's plan here. Trust us. This is what God says. And God has used you, Joel, and your relationship with Evie to model what that looks like for us. He used it to model what it looks like for our students and to our parents. And I just say on behalf of our church, that has not been wasted, and it will not be wasted. And we say thank you for that. Our students now have an example to follow. You put life to the things that we've been trying to teach our children. So this, this afternoon now, why could I say that I am confident that God will take this event and work good? It really comes back to the most horrific, horrific event in human history and how God used that horrific event to take an innocent man who had never sinned and brought him and allowed him to stand before a judge and false witnesses to accuse him and to ultimately put him on the cross where he would be crucified. God would take that event and from it work eternally good from it. And if God can do that, he can work good from even this situation. In Romans 8, verse 32, we read, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. We can consider a tragic event, and we can consider what just took place a Tuesday and Wednesday, and we can shake our fist, and we can say, This isn't fair. None of us want what is fair. Actually, we sing because our God hasn't treated us fairly. Instead, he has poured out onto us grace. He has given to us mercy. And we say, God, if we got what was fair, none of us would last 27 years. But in your grace, in your mercy, you have given us these years of, as a gift to be with Miss Abby. So let me then conclude with the last phrase, and it's a couple of different phrases. Phrases, As it says here in Romans 8, 28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. This promise is qualified. It is qualified to a person that one loves God and two who has been called according to his purpose. And I would say that that is the same thing. This promise is qualified to a person who has been called to be a child of God and as a result, they love God. This is a promise that the Christians in this room can bear. That God's going to take this. We know this. We can build our eternity on this. That God's going to take this event, all of our life, all the circumstances of our life, and he can work good. He will work good from it. Why? Because this is a promise that is attached for those who have been called by God and those who love God. The need to be called by God means to, to understand our sin, that we are dead in our sin. God in his grace opened our eyes to reveal our sin to us. In the process, he also revealed to us that someone died in our place, and that is Jesus. As a result, if we will cry out to him to be saved from our sins, he will then pour out his Holy Spirit in us, giving us the ability to love, love God back, to love others. At the wedding, um, Evie's father, Joe, as he is a great storyteller, shared a little bit about the meaning of Evie's name, about how it, who can bring life but God. I, I know Evie well enough to know 
that her great desire for this gathering today would be for you to hear that this eternal life could be offered to you. It is being offered to you. To know that you, you have sinned. You have violated God's law. We don't celebrate today that Evie was a good person based on her own efforts or morals. We celebrate the life, yes, but we are assured today that she is in heaven based that someone came and took what she deserved. She deserved the crucifixion, and Jesus took that in her place. God gave her life, eternal life, at that moment, and this is what we stand on today. It was D.L. Moody that one day was talking with a friend, and D.L. Moody said to his friend, one of these days you're going to read that D.L. Moody of East Northfield is dead. He said, don't you believe a word of that. I'll be more alive than I am now. And we stand on that today, that it is better to be a part here and to be with Jesus. And we celebrate that today she is with Jesus. If you want to honor her, yes, remember the memories. But if you are yet to become a Christian, would you be willing to go down that journey and explore? Maybe take the Gospel of John and begin to read that and say, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Maybe you've come today with someone that does know Christ and just to sit down with them and say, would you, would you explain again what they mean by the good news, the Gospel? Let me hear that. And just go on this journey of, of worshiping the Savior that Evie is with today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for bringing us to this passage, reminding us of this. And we, we bank our lives, we put our eternity on this truth, that you are here, that you're going to work in this situation. Oh, Lord, how we pray for you to minister to Joel, minister to family, minister to the family of our church and his friends. Just assurance, provide strength and help for us. And may we not forget, Evie, there's so many excellent qualities that she had that will linger. She truly was what Jesus said, that greatness is in serving and she, she served us, and we recall her greatness this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a song that we'll conclude our service with. It is written by another man who was very well acquainted with sudden loss, a loss of loved ones, of family members. His name is Horatio Spafford. And uh, as he was in his tragedy, he wrote out some words that was later put to music called, It Is Well. So brother, won't you come and lead us in that hymn? If you'd please take a hymnal, it's number 410. I want to be able to read and sing these words as we stand together, as we do right now. I want you to remember that this is your personal affirmation when you sing these words that this is what you believe God has done for you. He's faithful. Let's sing together all the, all the verses. <clears throat> Wait. 
And 